It's All Saints Day on the calendar of the church, and we ask, well, what's a saint? Uh, are there pictures of saints around, and who do we think of saints? Well, they're the famous ones, and there are the, also the important ones, which uh, have to wear masks at this time, that sometimes fall <coughs> off. <laughs> However, we are well spaced, and we can adjust, make adjustments along the way. We've learned, uh, we've learned how to do that during the last weeks and months. Uh, so, uh, who are the saints? Um, the ones in heaven that God has taken to himself, and uh, who are awaiting the resurrection, and uh, will be a part of uh, a great coming of the Lord, and a glorious uh, future that lies ahead. And then there's, well, the bunch of us. <laughs> we're saints. We're, we're not completely holy because we still sin. We're here. We have our weaknesses. And we need to come to confession as we do Sunday after Sunday. And in the privacy of your own self, when you offend God or when you fail in, in what, you, uh, uh, what you have done toward your neighbor, or in your family, that you go to God too, and also to any of those who have been offended. So we really begin this service with the confession of sins. All of us saints, we're <coughs> meeting at this time for God's forgiveness. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Amen. If you, Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? But with you there is forgiveness, therefore you are here. Since we are gathered to hear God's word, call upon him in prayer and praise, and receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ and the fellowship of this altar, let us first consider our unworthiness and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together, as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God, our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ, and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. And together, Almighty God, have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Almighty God in his mercy has given his son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Yeah. 
Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you knit together your faithful people of all times and places into one holy communion. The mystical body of your Son, Jesus Christ, grant us so to follow your blessed saints in all virtuous and godly living, together with them, we may come to unspeakable joys that you have prepared for those who love you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the lessons. The first lesson for today comes from Revelation chapter 7, starting at verse 9. <clears throat> After this, I looked, and behold, a great multitude that no one could number, from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed in white robes, with palm branches in their hands, and crying out with a loud voice, Salvation belongs to our God, who sits on the throne and to the Lamb, and all the angels were standing around the throne and, on, and around the elders and the four living creatures, and they fell on their faces before the throne and worshiped God, saying, Amen, blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders addressed me, saying, who are these clothed in white robes, and from where have they come? I said to him, Sir, you know. And he said to me, These are the ones coming out of the great tribulation. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Therefore, <clears throat> they are before the throne of God and serve him day and night in his temple. And he who sits on the throne will shelter them with his presence. They shall hunger no more, neither thirst any more. The sun shall not strike them, nor any scorching heat. For the lamb in the midst of the throne will be their shepherd, and he will guide them to springs of living water, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. This is the word of the Lord. epistle comes from 1st John chapter 3 starting at verse 1 see what kind of love the father has given to us that we should be called children of God and so we are the reason why the world does not know us is that it did not know him beloved we are beloved we are God's children now and what will and what we will be has not yet appeared. But we know <clears throat> that when he appears, we shall be like him, because we shall see, like, see him as he is. And everyone who thus hopes in him purifies himself as he is pure. This is the word of the Lord.
gospel according to St. Matthew, the fifth chapter. Glory to you, o Lord. Seeing the crowds, Jesus went up on the mountain. And when he sat down, his disciples came to him. And he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when others revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven, for so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated for the sermon hymn. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. A very special thing is happening today at the confirmation of some of our younger members. We rejoice with them, and uh, I've made a, a special sermon for this. It's All Saints Day. We prayed, we uh, sang for all the saints who from their labors rest. But we move into a kind of younger area of uh, the church's rejoicing. And that is when young people, having been instructed in the faith of our Lord Jesus Christ and what he has done for us and have been catechized, by the way, two fine lay pre people have been very active over the last couple of years 
in these classes of catechism, and one of them is John Scove, and the other one is Peter Fuller. We thank you for this sacrifice of your time, as you spent it most uh, usefully in the raising up of these young people in their Christian faiths. Thank you. And now for those young people. We're all young at heart, so the rest of you can listen. <laughs> Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The day on the calendar is all saints. And now for us, it's Confirmation Sunday. Four young people, two fine lay teachers, diligent and patient parents, all happily involved. When I was 14, I was confirmed at Redeemer Lutheran Church in Westfield, New Jersey. At that age, I really didn't pay much attention to sermons in church. <laughs> Unfortunately, that carries on even to old age. <laughs> on Confirmation Sunday, the pastor at my confirmation prepared a sermon for the six young people in my class. But I don't remember one word of it. Today, young folks in front of me, I want you four to do better. To actually listen to this sermon because it is for you as well as all of us. And to take something home today with you for your future well-being. Now, the Bible text I'm using is from the Old Testament book of Ecclesiastes. Has anyone here read that book? There are some, but it's not our favorite. I don't believe. Well, somebody says, yes, it is. Mm. There's got to always be one. <laughs> Indeed. Uh, Ecclesiastes means the teacher. He is probably King Solomon, though he does not mention his name. But Solomon lived about uh, 1,200 years ago. Long time. It's part of the wisdom section in the scriptures. There are several of these books. And this one, he, there's Song of Solomon is one of them. This one, however, is Ecclesiastes, and it's a kind of a teaching book. The teacher does introduce himself. The author, he calls himself son of David, king in Jerusalem. So we can assume that he is very wise, he's very rich, and he's very powerful. Do I have your attention, you four? <laughs> Shake yes. <laughs> Good. Keep it up. As he writes the book, Solomon gets very personal with us. In the second verse in that book, he reveals to us that his life is in crisis. <clears throat> He can find no meaning in even being alive. I'll read you some of what he says about his meltdown. Here are some quotes. Now, you and I will probably wonder, what's the matter with his king? Doesn't he know when he's well off? I read these experts or ex excerpts, excuse me. <laughs> Here's how he writes, and I'll be begin from that gloomy beginning. The words of the teacher, son of David, king of Jerusalem. 
Meaningless, meaningless, says the teacher. Utter meanliness. Everything is meaningless. Want to hear more? <laughs> Tighten your belts. He goes on. All things are wearisome. More than one can say. The eye never has enough of seeing, nor the ear its fill of hearing. What has been will be again. What has been done will be done again. There's nothing new under the sun. Sounds like a bored teenager to me. <laughs> he goes on. I, the teacher, was king over Israel and Jerusalem. I devoted myself to study and to explore by, my, by wisdom all that is done under heaven. What a heavy burden God has laid on men. I have seen all the things that are done under the sun, and all of them are meaningless. A chasing after the wind. Have you ever tried to out, outrace the wind? He goes on. You can take a little bit more of this. He writes, I undertook great projects. I built houses for myself and planted vineyards. I made gardens and parks and planted all kinds of fruit trees in them. I made reservoirs to water groves of flourishing trees. I also owned more herds, herds and flocks than anyone in Jerusalem before me. I amass silver and gold for myself and the treasures of kings and provinces. I became greater by far than anyone in Jerusalem before me. He's really not very bashful, is he? But it is true. And finally he says, I denied myself nothing my eyes desire. I refused my heart no pleasure. Yet when I surveyed all that my hands had done and what I had toiled to achieve, you guessed it, everything was meaningless. A chasing after wind. And one more. So I hated life because the work that is done under the sun was grievous to me. All of it is, all of it is meaningless. I hated all things that I had toiled for under the sun. Well, I won't stop here. This is nowhere to start. Because he makes some, uh, some interesting discoveries. Let me turn to one. I hope I have that page. <laughs> I'm sure it's here. It better be? Ah, yes. You will not be disappointed. His discovery is about another person. It begins down at the dumps again, but it's about somebody else. He says, I saw something meaningless under the sun. There was a man all alone. See, it's somebody else. He had neither son nor brother. There was no end to his toil. 
Yet his eyes were not content with his wealth. For whom am I toiling, he asked. And why am I depriving myself of enjoyment? This too is meaningless, a miserable business. So we haven't exactly changed the mood here, but he has found somebody that's in the same boat he is. And it's a revelation to him. It is amazing. Everything seems terrible, and I'm not the only one. Well, that's a help. And what's a help is that he looks upon himself and the other man, and he makes a kind of revelation. He has a, an upcoming, and he becomes the teacher, and he's the teacher of himself. And here are the two things that he raises up that are light. They will need some explanation because they're kind of in, well, you'll see. Here is number one. Let me change to that. Solomon had discovered something. Another man worked just as hard as he, made lots of money, but found himself painfully alone. He had no son, no brother, and no friend. And so a light bulb went on in Solomon's head. That man and I have the same problem. We both have no close relationships. And here come the two truths which he rises up to. Simply put, two are better than one. Simple enough. And then number two, a cord of three strands is not quickly broken. Hmm. I don't get it. Hmm. This will take some explanation. And let's take them one at a time. Here is the wisdom of Solomon that's going through a change of brightness. This has meaning. We'll take them one at a time. First, two are better than one. We look at chapter 4. Two are better than one, he writes, because they have a good return for their work. Yeah, twice as much gets done. If one falls down, his friend can help him up, but pity the man who falls and has no one to help him up. I think we'd agree. Though one may be overpowered, two can defend themselves. Yeah, we can come to the rescue for anyone with whom we have a, uh, a relationship, a close one. When we can look at another person or several friends, upon we know if we called upon them, they'd be at our side. Some people don't have that. And I could see why he'd say everything is meaningless if that is the case. And then he owns up to that reality. He, the king, with power and wealth, 
was alone. They feared him as a king, but he had no friends. So two are better than one. And that doesn't mean that, uh, well, for, for instance, a marriage, when two people pledge themselves to each other, there is a close relationship. We can depend on certain things. But it relates to friends too. Two are better than one or more. We live in a mobile society right now. The family and friends come and go these days and keeping up old relationships really takes attention. New friends and family we can find. But the truth is we need others and they need us. And to live out this truth brings an important meaning to your life and others. You see, that's how God made us, whether we recognize it or not. That's the first. Two are better than one. The second one, Solomon leads us to the most important spiritual truth about meaning. He uses a strange expression to illustrate and that's the title of this sermon. A cord of three strands is not quickly broken. Hmm. Your life will have great meaning if God is centered in your heart by faith in him. What are these three strands that hold meaning for our lives? You are one strand. That has meaning to you because in your best kind of thoughts, you know that your life is a gift to you and it has and should have meaning. The second of the strands is other people with whom you can relate. You need them and they need you. And your spiritual center, the strand, the third strand, and it doesn't come last. It should really come first. And that last strand is God your Father and your Savior Jesus Christ. So with these intact, your life will be meaningful now and forever in eternity. And you will have help, God's word, Holy Communion, your church, your Christian friends. You have no reason to ever cry out, life is meaningless. You can find a friend in other people and they can relate to you. God has not put you into an empty world, you see. We can be a blessing to each other and that's meaningful. God gave himself to you in Jesus Christ. Jesus invites you Come follow me. Answer, yes, Lord. Show me the way. And you know, he will. And your life will have meaning now and forever.
And with that, God bless you, and amen to that. Amen. Now, it's time for our confirmants to go and do their part. Would you stand up, please? We'll begin with, with their Bible verses, and they're one of their assignments with me was to pick any Bible verse that means something that's special to you. And I'm going to have them read those one at a time and uh, kind of preach those by coming up to the lectern. Please, come all the way. Don, please read with full voice. Oh, you may be seated. Accept our compliments. My chosen reading has come from the book of Ruth, 1, chapter 1, 16 through 17. True meaning of devotion and honor it does, it does take sometimes more than just two people and a strand of three. For where you go, I will go. Where you lodge, I will lodge. Your people shall become my people and your God my God. Where you die, I will die. And there I will be buried. May the Lord do so to me and more also if anything but death parts me from you. Much like a Marine, no man walks alone or should be alone. And God is always with me. Thank you. Move on to Garrett, please. John 3.16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son, but whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. Thank you. Right. And now Julie. Romans 1.16. For I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes. Amen. And the lady. Galatians chapter 2, verse 20. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. In the life I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. Amen to that. You may take your uh, places there at, in, the, uh, in the aisle and remain standing.
Beloved in the Lord, our Lord Jesus Christ said to his disciples, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. You have been baptized and catechized in the Christian faith according to our Lord's bidding. Jesus said, Whoever confesses me before men, I will also confess before my Father who is in heaven. But whoever denies me before men, I will also deny before my Father who is in heaven. Lift up your hearts, therefore, to God of all grace, and joyfully give answer to what I now ask you in the name of the Lord. Our answers will be in unison. Do you this day in the presence of God and of this congregation acknowledge the gifts that God gave you in your baptism? Yes, sir. Do you renounce the devil? Do you renounce all his works? Yes, I renounce them. Do you renounce all his ways? Yes, I renounce them. Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty? Yes, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord? Yes, I believe. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? And you answer? Yes, I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of the saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Do you hold all the prophetic and apostolic scriptures to be the inspired word of God? Do you confess the doctrine of the Evangelical Lutheran Church drawn from the scriptures as you have learned to know it from the small catechism to be faithful and true? I do. Do you intend to hear the word of God and receive the Lord's Supper faithfully? I do by the grace of God. Do you intend to live according to the word of God and in faith and word and deed to remain true to God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, even to death? Yes, I do. The grace of God. Do you intend to continue steadfast in this confession and church, and to suffer all, even death, rather than to fall away from it? I do. By the grace of God. We rejoice with thankful hearts that you have been baptized and have received the teaching of the Lord. You have confessed the faith and been absolved of your sins as you continue to hear the Lord's word and receive his blessed sacrament. He who has begun a good work in you will bring it to completion at the day of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. You may kneel. Relax. <laughs> this is a complicated service.
Okay. <clears throat> Just a little bit of a break here. Oh, it's time for the certificates. Delaney Renee Jacobson. Having received instruction in the sacred teachings of the Christian religion, as found in the Holy Scriptures and confessed by the Evangelical Lutheran Church, and having vowed before God and his Christian congregation to be faithful to our Lord Jesus Christ and his saving gospel, is received into communicant membership at the Lutheran Church of the Way. Your scripture that will be yours reads, The Almighty God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given you the new birth of water and the Spirit, and has forgiven you all your sins, strengthened you with his grace to life everlasting. And your scripture is, for I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes. Romans chapter 1, verse 16. Julie Ann Richardson, having received instruction in the sacred teachings of the Christian religion as found in the Holy Scriptures and confessed by the Evangelical Lutheran Church, and having vowed before God and this Christian congregation to be faithful to our Lord Jesus Christ and his saving gospel, is received into communicant membership in the Lutheran Church of the Way. Almighty God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given you the new birth of water and of the Holy Spirit and has forgiven you all your sins, strengthen you with his grace to life everlasting. And your verse from Holy Scripture, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. I give them eternal life, and they will never perish, and no one will snatch them out of my hand. To read the refreshing and serious promise of our Lord Jesus Christ. John chapter 10, verses 27. 28. Garrett Bundy Scove Having received instruction in the sacred teachings of the Christian religious religion, 
found in the Holy Scriptures and confessed by the Evangelical Lutheran Church, and having vowed before God and this Christian congregation to be faithful to our Lord Jesus Christ and his saving gospel, is received into communicant membership in the Lutheran Church of the Way. The Almighty God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given you the new birth of water and the Holy Spirit, and has forgiven you all your sins, strengthen you with his grace to life everlasting. And your scripture verse is the following. It's the words of to Joshua. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be frightened. And do not be dismayed. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Don Michel Estano, having received instruction in the sacred teachings of the Christian religion, as found in the Holy Scriptures and confessed by the Evangelical Lutheran Church, and having vowed before God and this Christian congregation to be faithful to our Lord Jesus Christ and his saving gospel, is received into communicant membership in the Lutheran Church of the Way. The Almighty God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given you the new birth of water and of the Holy Spirit and has forgiven you all your sins, strengthen you with his grace to life everlasting. Amen. And your scripture is Jeremiah 29, 11. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans for welfare and not for evil, to give you a future and a hope. Jeremiah 29, verse 11. you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you peace. Amen. The first three verses. Thee will I love my strength, my power. Please run for this one.
standing with the, with the great multitude, the saints before the throne of God and the Lamb, let us join in prayer, praise, and thanksgiving to the God of our salvation. Mighty and eternal God, we remember you before the saints and martyrs of every generation who trusted in you in the face of terror and threat. Grant that when facing persecution and trial in our own day, we may be steadfast in faith. Deliver us, deliver those whom you have washed in baptism, granting the new life and death, granting the new life and death cannot overcome. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Mighty and eternal God, you established the church and have granted her your aid and protection through these many years. Continue to pour out your spirit and grace upon us in the community of East Freetown, that we may accomplish your bidding and proclaim your saving name to every corner of the earth. Lord, in your mercy. Mighty and eternal God, we beg your grace that, life, that lives may be ordered by your commands, and we ask you to bless those who govern us in your name. Bless our president, the Congress, our governor, the legislature, and all local officials, that <clears throat> pursuing the path of justice, they may act with humility and honor for the good of all people. Give wisdom to all who vote this week and bless its result that our nation may elect our leaders peacefully and orderly. Lord, in your mercy. Mighty and eternal God, we rejoice in the confirmation of our catechumens. Continue to guide and grow their faith in you. Remind them daily of your grace and mercy for them and give them strength to live as you called them to live as light in the world. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Mighty and eternal God, you have made us your children and you continue to guard us as your own possession. According to your will, give healing to the sick, calm to the troubled in mind and patience to those facing sorrow and struggle. Give health and peace to our nation. Hear, and hear us especially on behalf of Robert, Mark, Jean, Walt, Reese, Mark, Esme, Arlene, Claudette, Stephen, Dick, and Ken, Mac, Claire, Katerina, John, Mason, Artis, Josh, Jesse, Judy, Daniel, Ray, Amy, and the Iowa District of our President, President Saunders, Ron, Margaret, and those afflicted by COVID-19. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Almighty and eternal God, show forth your kindness to the poor and your compassion to those who suffer injustice. Deliver us from the scourge of racism and prejudice and help us to acknowledge our common life from your creative power and your common redemption in Christ. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Mighty and eternal God, we are unworthy of all your blessings, and you do not deserve the, the mercies <clears throat> new every morning in our earthly lives. Give us the will and desire to care responsibly for all, especially for Jesse fighting the pandemic. You have entrusted us to be generous with those in need, and for the support of your church and the work of your kingdom. Bless Bill and Jeffrey celebrating birthdays and Ariel and Shirley celebrating an anniversary. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. We'll now move forward into the service of the sacrament. That's on page 13 uh, in your uh, bulletin. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. 
It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Everlasting God, for the countless blessings you so freely bestow on us and all creation. Above all, we give thanks for your boundless love shown to us when you sent your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, into our flesh and laid on him our sin giving him into death, that we might not die eternally. Because he is now risen from the dead and lives and reigns to all eternity, all who believe in him will overcome sin and death and will rise again to new life. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and singing. Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, King of all creation, for you have had mercy on us and given your only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. In your righteous judgment, you condemned the sin of Adam and Eve, who ate the forbidden fruit, and you justly barred them from their children and the life of and the tree of life. Yet in your great mercy, you promise salvation by a second Adam, your son Jesus Christ our Lord, and made his cross a life-giving tree for all who trust in him. We give you thanks for the redemption you have prepared through Jesus Christ. Grant us your Holy Spirit that we may faithfully eat and drink of the fruits of his cross and receive the blessing of forgiveness, life, and salvation that come to us in his body and blood. Hear us as we pray in his name and as he taught us. Our, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us of our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The words of our Lord. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take it, this is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance 
of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Body and blood strengthen and preserve you in the one true faith, the one peace. Serve the Lord. Amen. The uh, Confirmants will have their First Communion, <coughs> and the members of the family that wish to commune with them may go up with them at this point. Just come right up to the right. <laughs>
body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you in body and soul to life everlasting. Go in peace. Amen. 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 Please rise. thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift, and we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us to the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Amen. The final hymn, two verses. Please be seated. Are there announcements?
What was the last thing about the core? Pardon me? Three strands to be one. Three strands. Now that got me curious. I went out to my garage and uh, got some twine here that looked pretty good. And I came back and uh, let's see. <coughs> Just a minute. By the way, this is the last thing I'm going to pull up, so uh, <laughs> don't worry. But it will be worth uh, the, the trial. I need a scissors for it, and I have one here. And what I'm going to do is uh, lick it off. And uh, by the way, how many strands do you think is there? What? Three. Okay. Now, I'm going to take it apart and I'm going to give you one. I'm cheap with you, with your girls. And I'm going to give you one too. I'm not going to take this one apart. You take that. Now, Delaney, turn around and then see if you can break it. <laughs> Good. Can you? Oh, come on. <laughs> it's supposed to break. <laughs> Okay, turn around. Thank <laughs> you. 